Aloha and howdy! I'm Heather and this is Forkish Habits. Today I've got a special recipe for all the carnivores in the house. And this is something you might want to think twice about if you're a bright line eater in ordering in a restaurant. Today, we're going to make foolproof, I kid you not, foolproof prime rib in your oven at home. Now, how do I know this is foolproof? Because this is a tried and tested recipe. My family has made this every year for Christmas as far back as I can remember. I got you with this recipe. For all you Brightline eaters that are watching this, why would you not want to order prime rib in a restaurant? Well, let me tell you a personal story. When I go to steakhouses, which I do with friends and family because it's a good safe place for all of us to eat together and for me to get a clean, bright meal, I regularly inform them that I am allergic, because that's how my body responds, allergic to all sugars and flours. And what can I maneuver in their menu with? Well, I have been shocked to be told that prime rib is off the menu for me. Say what? Well, apparently restaurants like to flour their prime rib. You gotta be careful in restaurants and really ask and advocate for yourself because you never know what they're using that sugar or flour to bump up that recipe that will be a surprise to you. So what do we do? We get a recipe to make it at home. Now you may be surprised to find out that prime rib is technically not steak. This is a roast. <laughs> now if, the, if you had pre-cut the meat and you cook it already um, sliced up, that becomes your ribeye steak. So here I have my naked prime rib. And you'll notice it's got this big layer of fat here on the top. You do not want to cut that off before you cook it. Even if you're not going to be eating the fat, you want it on there because it's protecting the meat underneath in the cooking. And it's also gonna add tremendous flavor. Now, my prime rib here has bones in it which you can see down here at the bottom. It's called a standing rib roast because it has bones in it and we're gonna have it stand up on those bones when it cooks. Now you can get, um, get some prime rib without the bones or you can have your butcher cut it off of the bones and then retie them on so it'll be even easier when you want to carve it. So today we're going to cook this in the oven. The only thing that we're going to put on this beforehand is a bunch of salt and pepper. If you would really like to do some other kind of herbs, that's totally up to you. But a simple basic form of prime rib is simply salt and peppered. So now that we have salt and peppered our prime rib or standing rib roast, we're ready to put this in the oven. The oven has not been preheated. We're going to put this into the cold oven and set it for 375 and leave it in there for one hour. At the end of that hour, we're going to come back and turn off the oven. And we're going to let it sit in that oven for two to three hours. 
you have just a loose window of a couple hours of just having it sit in that warm oven. It is super important that you never ever open the oven once we put it in there until it is all done and you're ready to take it out. That is part of the foolproofness of this. Don't open the oven. So we're gonna put a sign on it and we're gonna tape it closed so nobody else that smells this delicious prime rib cooking goes to peek at it. So now that our prime rib is resting in the oven, it's cooked for an hour and, um, and it can now sit for two to three. My table is set for a special occasion. So my husband is getting this as his Valentine's dinner. And this would make a great meal to serve to guests, to do for a birthday, um, an anniversary. So what is the rest of this foolproof plan gonna look like? We salt and peppered our meat. We put it in an oven that was cold, turned it on 375, taped it closed, left it in there for an hour. At the end of that hour, we turned the oven off and don't open the oven. The oven is sitting resting right now. Then we're gonna come back and we're gonna turn the oven on to 300 degrees. If you want rare, it's gonna be 45 minutes. If you want medium rare, no, if you want medium, it's gonna be 50. So you're gonna want it 45 to 50. You do not want to eat prime rib well done. It's not a slice of meat that's meant to be well done. Then we're gonna bring it out of the oven at that point and we're going to cover it with some foil, if you're a foil kind of person, and if not, you could put some parchment in between and then put foil on, but we're gonna have it rest for 30 minutes. We're gonna carve it, plate it, and eat it. Okay, here is our gorgeous, foolproof prime rib. So now we're gonna cover it with some foil and it's gonna sit for 30 minutes so all the juices can get in that meat good and it'll be ready for carving. Now for our bonus feature in our prime rib video. I don't know about you, but for me, the point of prime rib is to be an avenue for the horseradish. Love horseradish. Love it, love it, love it. Now I've learned that I have to be careful about the horseradish that I buy from the store because horseradish can have junk in it you don't want to be eating. Remember, what's my mantra? Bonus points for anybody who just said it. <laughs> my mantra is read your labels, read your labels, read your labels, right? If you're eating anything that comes in a package, you should read those labels so you know what's in it. So here I have two different horseradishes that I purchased that both have clean ingredients in it. All they have is horseradish, vinegar, and salt. I find that often the horseradish that's clean without stuff in it that I don't want is in the refrigerator section in the grocery store. But today we're gonna try something different. I found horseradish root at the store in the produce section. Now I know he's not anything really to look at, like he doesn't look horribly attractive, but we are going to grate horseradish for our own fresh horseradish. So let's get started. The first thing you wanna do when you buy uh, the root is it's gonna be cut and so where those cut ends are, you wanna cut those off first because they're gonna be kind of bitter. You want just a fresh end. Okay, so we cut our ends off. Now we're going to need to peel. 
So we got our peeler. And we need to get these edges. Okay. That is already looking much prettier, isn't it? Now we just have this nice white root. Now we're gonna put him into the food processor. You can grate this yourself, but it is very pungent. And so it makes the eye watering that can happen with onions look like a walk in the park. So we're gonna put it in the food processor so this baby can take on a bunch of that eye watering damage. So you can see that we've got him grated, but he's kind of some really big grating. We want to get him smaller than that. Woo! And he is potent. Eyes starting to water. So we're going to put our blade in. We're going to put in just a teeny bit of apple cider vinegar, or you could use white vinegar. Just a teeny, teeny bit. It's going to like a teaspoon in the amount of the root that I had. And we're gonna put in a little salt. That, that vinegar is gonna bite, um, cut a little bit of the bite. Mmm, there we go. Now you can see what it looks like. That's looking good. Ooh, ooh. I wish we had like smell-o-vision because then you could smell the prime rib that's cooling back there and your eyes could start to water from the horseradish. Woo, coming from here. This is, oh, this is gonna be good stuff. This is gonna be good stuff. So now, if you wanted to make creamy horseradish, all you need to do is add some sour cream to your horseradish to make it into the creamy. So you can even have you can have it straight up or creamy. Now you can put this in a sealed container. You want to make sure it's going to be a really good sealed container because otherwise your refrigerator is going to smell like horseradish. And so and it will last um, in your refrigerator for three to four weeks, or you can freeze it. Now in Bright Line Eating. Horseradish is a free condiment. So if you like a little spice, you can make your own horseradish and use it in all different things to play up some flavor. So today, this was your bonus in your prime rib recipe. And so here we have our finished product. Thank you so much to my hubby cameraman for cutting it for me. This was a four and a half pound with the bone in and it ended up resting for 45 minutes because I'm filming and stuff happens. If you like this recipe, hit that like for me. If you would like to see more Bright Line Eating recipes like this one, hit subscribe and that notification bell so you'll be notified every time I bring out a new recipe. Remember that you can find us on the website at Forkish Habits, on our Facebook page, and on Instagram. We'll see you next time in our kitchen at Forkish Habits.